Hey guys, welcome back to Mars. In today's video, I just wanted to give you a grocery haul to show you everything that I got when I went to our local Lidl store. I wanted to give you, um, I laid everything out and then I will let you know how much it all costs. So I don't know about you guys, but one of my therapy sessions or favorite pastime is actually going to the grocery store or going food shopping for my family. <coughs> Excuse me. I like to take this as an opportunity to just be able to clear my mind, it's not all about planning. A lot of times it's a get in and go, but when the kids are not there, I'm able to just, you know, mosey on. I get a lot of my inspiration by just walking up and down the aisles to see the type of things that I'm going to get. So, hey, buddy. Yeah, so it is a Saturday. It has been a cleaning Saturday. This is typically what we do. So just letting you know where we are. Okay, my love. Seeing all of this that you just helped me get out of our trunk and lay on the table, how much would you guess all this costs? 220 220 Nope. The grand total came to less than $189. Yes. All right, so I wanted to show you exactly everything that we had gotten. If you don't know and if, you, um, if you've never heard me talk about it before, I like to do freezer cooking to help prep for my family. So, uh, excuse me, sorry. So, excuse the little hands. So I went and got 12 pack of of the Lidl brand low fat yogurt. They were 25 cents each. I got one of the name brand of the Danimals. I did get a pack of these. They're just as good as the um, as the name brand of the granola bars. I also got a pack of the maple and brown sugar as well as the apple cinnamon. You can't have my yogurt. As well as the apple cinnamon um, oatmeal for breakfast for the kids. One of the recipes that I'm going to be making needs some oats, so I got one of those. My husband loves to snack on cashews, and that was actually a pretty good price. The dozen eggs, they had a dozen large eggs for 78 cents each, so I went ahead and got two. The wheat bread, the honey wheat, was at 85 cents a piece. I did get some lemonade. I wanted to try to do a copycat recipe of the Starbucks medicine ball or cold buster. So I did get some of that because I feel like I'm, my body's trying to fight something. Got the gallon of milk. I got three quarts of the beef broth because I'm going to be make, making some veggie and beef soup as one of my freezer meals. One of the other freezer meals is going to be needing some crushed tomatoes as well as tomato sauce and tomato paste. I did get an additional lemon pepper seasoning because I will be making some chicken wings for dinner tonight and I'd like to do the chicken, um, the lemon pepper chicken wings. I got some ground ginger for another meal that I'm planning. We got the Nay brand, just tastes just as well as Sweet Baby Ray's but it is a little brand and this was I think right at a dollar. Lemon juice as well. I did get one of the 100% apple juice as well as the 100% of the cranberry juice. I have gotten spring mix were on sale for um, this week and I think each pack was like $1.59. Tomorrow we're having church in the park and so therefore it's going to be a big cookout. So a lot of the produce I have for that is um, I was in charge of getting the size for the for the cheeseburgers or for hamburgers so you'll see that I, got, I will be washing all of this lettuce getting this mixed leaf lettuce putting it out to you know putting it out washing it tonight and drying it so we can take that as well as I'm going to be cutting up some tomatoes some red onions and then I've got a bunch of these packs of the mild cheddar for us for that but everything else is for us at home I've got I've got a new crinkle cutter I wanted to try this stuff out getting ready for prepping things for school lunches that are coming up so I did get three of the cucumbers they were 58 cents each I got a pack of carrots which I think was less was definitely less than two dollars a pack of the celery this three pack of green peppers I think was 189 a pack of dill was 159 this uh, sliced mushrooms was you know less than two dollars as well they had a pack of two pounds of Vidalia onions for I think right around two dollars we've got the mini mix peppers for one of the recipes that I'm going to be using. Again, I said the Roma tomatoes. The Roma tomatoes are for tomorrow's cookout. I did get some more butter because I always like to have some on hand. Sandwich meat I have is the Lidl brand of the turkey breast. It's a pound of the turkey breast and I think that was it was less than three dollars for that as well as the hard salami for sandwich mix. I have a lot of cheese. I do like to snack with, um, with cheddar with cheese and almonds. 
and then for I do they had on sale I like to grate whenever I can instead of shredding buying it already pre-shredded our cheese because you know they put something in there whether something that make it anti-caking so when you have a chance just grate what you can they had the Parmesan cheese this um, this week was on sale I think it was just a Saturday and Sunday deal only for $2.59 so I got two of those and then the I guess you know the little brand of the Capri Suns or what have you the juice pouches for tomorrow for church okay so then I went ahead and I got I mean it's beautiful fruit so I've got some pears got some nectarines I got a pack of peaches I got I have some green seedless grapes I also have gotten three pound bag of the gala apples a five pound bag of the golden Yukon golden potatoes I'm going to be doing some Parmesan turkey burgers and setting them up for the freezer so one night we just have to pull those out and throw them on the grill so I got two pounds of the turkey meat this out so they had Sanderson Farms whole chicken legs I like to break these up so that's three leg quarters in a pack this one was for $2.65 I think that's the most expensive one all the other ones I had gotten were um, I think the range is between $2.30 and $2.65 I got eight packs of those because this can freeze up I like to make my lemon garlic chicken and as well as my lemon rosemary chicken with these um, I'm a dark meat fan I do do breast chicken breast when I need to but uh, for the lemon garlic chicken freezer meals, I'm going to set up, set these up, and that'll be another, when I prep these, this will be another, when I do my big cook with me freezer meal day, this will be, a, I'll show you how I prepare these. For tonight, we've got the chicken wings. It's the opening day of college football, right babe? So I wanted to go ahead and do some wings for that. I also needed to get some cleaning supplies, so we have some all-purpose cleaner as well as we were out of chicken bag, um, excuse me, kitchen bags. But all of this for one less than one eighty-nine. I think it came to one eighty-eight and some change. So I just wanted to show you if you have a Lidl or an Aldi in your in your neighborhood, it is worth going to check them out. Okay, so I wanted to just show you how I'm prepping my first meal for the freezer. It's going to end up making four meals for my big family of six, um, as well as having leftovers for the next day. So I've got the, I had gotten eight packs when I, in the grocery haul at Lidl. Each one of these packs has three um, leg quarters in it. So each Ziploc bag is going to have two packs total, which will be a total of six pieces of chicken, six thighs and six legs, because we're a dark meat family. Um, so the first thing that I've done with the, the first four packs, I'm going to do my first two, is I have cut them, you know, I've cut them in half, so I've separated the thighs from the legs. I have washed the chicken. Now I'm about to season it, and then I'll show you how I put it all together. Okay, so I just wanted to show you exactly how I do one of these. Um, hindsight, of course, is 2020. The one thing that I did forget to do is label this bag, but uh, it's pretty clear that this is going to be lemon chicken. So to the bag of the 12 pieces of chicken, and like I said, this will be good for one meal for us. And in terms of leftovers, it'll be enough leftovers to have lunch for Mel and I the next day. So therefore, what... I do is I pour in a half a cup of oil, either olive or grapeseed per bag. This is what you're going to do. So half a cup of the oil. Depends on how. After I put in the oil, and it doesn't really matter which way you layer this, depending on how tart you like or how much lemon flavor you like, we like the lemon flavor a lot. A I'll lot. Put in, thank you, Sid. I put in just under a cup of lemon juice for these 12 pieces of chicken. And again, this is lemon garlic chicken, so I'll do about two tablespoons of the minced garlic. And I season my meat, just a simple seasoning of the pepper, the seasoned salt, as well as the, um, as well as some onion powder. So that's, it's simple seasonings. That's all that I do in here. And then after that, I put in a few shakes of the dried parsley. It's never good to, it's never good to put in 
to freeze the herbs I've been told so I like to use dried herbs when I'm working with my frozen meals so I'll put in a few shakes of that probably about a tablespoon and a half and that is the end of this one I have this really cool really cool stand that I had gotten I get them a lot on Amazon but they help with keeping your bag still so then I just tighten it up squeeze all the air out I will mix it all together to make sure everything is good and then what I will do is stick this in the freezer this recipe will make four like I said I have another pack already in here ready for the next freezer bag it's a gallon freezer bag so it's not much you gotta also be careful to not cross contaminate but what I do is just get it all together start trying to work the mixture together the night before I want to the night before I want to serve this I will stick it in the freezer I mean take it from the fridge and stick it into the freezer the night before so that it can go ahead and thaw then it's your option if you're at home you want to throw it in your slow cooker for a high on four low on eight hours or sometimes I just throw it into the oven 375 so that is what you do and then of course some good sides of veggies side of this will make pretty good juice just like any other baked chicken so that's how you do it so I just wanted to show you the finished product. One thing that I forgot to mention is I always double bag my Ziploc bags just in case there's any leakage or spillage um, while they're freezing. You know, it'll be contained within the other bag. So I will label the outside of this bag and that is how I do all four of them. So on to the next meal. Okay, so here I am on to the second meal in my freezer batch cooking that I'm going to be doing tonight. I just paused because I had to get dinner on the table for we were, what we were actually eating tonight. So um, my next meal is going to be Parmesan turkey burgers. This should make about eight to 10 burgers, so that'll be a good meal for us. And what I do is I always freeze everything flat. I'll, fresh, I'll flash freeze them. Um, on some parchment paper once I've made the patties and then I will once they are frozen for about an hour and a half to two hours then I will layer them in a Ziploc gallon size bag and then throw them in the throw them in the deep freezer so in here what I have is two pounds of turkey I have some Asiago and Parmesan cheese mix some parsley I've done some garlic seasoning as well as some onion seasoning a little bit of the seasoned salt and some pepper gonna mix it all together and throw it throw it um throw oh I did also because I like a little bit of the crunch we did add some red onions just a, a little bit of maybe like a fourth of a diced red onion for all of this so get all of this together make the patties and then I'll be done So it is 10 30 here and i am calling it a night so um as you saw from the previous picture i made i was able to get 10 turkey patties turkey parmesan turkey uh, burgers out of that mixture i had flash frozen them for about 90 minutes and now i have taken them and um, stored them in a ziploc bag and held well and then we'll be able to take them out and fry them up or cook them up as we do for normal burgers and I am going to just have to break this batch cooking up into two days because I am sleepy okay guys hey welcome back this is day two of my batch freezer cooking um, so when I left off I was able to do on Saturday because it's now Monday evening so I'm going to do a little bit throughout the week and that's kind of how you have to get this done I wasn't able to devote a full Saturday to completely prepping everything so as the week goes through you know I'm going to be able to just do a little bit as I can and that's how we're going to get it done so on Saturday I was able to prep all of my lemon garlic chicken bags so I have four bags of that as well as clean doing all the grocery shopping and everything the only other thing I had time to do was the Parmesan turkey burgers so today I actually picked up from my Walmart grocery shop one of those big um, in the grocery shop I had um, one of those big 10 pound 
basically, you know, the ground beef, one of those big 10 pounds um, one. So I have split that. I'm using three pounds of uh, roughly three pounds of that to make two um, or a little over two and a half pounds, I think closer to three. And I'm going to hopefully make two barbecue meatloaves for that. Uh, for the freezer so that is raw meat so I can mix all that together and then I have my seven pounds that I'm actually starting to cook down right now from from the seven pounds of chicken I'm going to I mean excuse me of the ground beef like I said it's Monday I plan on making at least two nine by 13 pans of shepherd's pie as well as using the rest of the beef for my vegetable beef soup so that's where we are today I'm also hoping to go ahead and for um, my other slow cooker meals, I'm going to hopefully, while the chicken is still frozen, get, I think, at least two bags of the chicken teriyaki. It just depends on how much soy sauce I have. I know for a fact I can get one done today, and then we'll kind of see what else I'm going to be doing. I think that probably will be all that I get today. I'm not exactly sure in terms of how much more prep other than chopping up my onions, chopping up my green peppers, and so on and so forth to get ready for these meals. I'll definitely be able to put, so I'll get um, these seven pounds together, cooking, browning, and then I'll probably let that cool off and I'll probably stick that in the freezer, I mean the fridge, and then tomorrow I'll finish those up. But definitely tonight I will get the meatloaf done, the chicken teriyaki, and just some of the prep done. Um, because tonight I'm going to make shrimp risotto for dinner, so I also have to have time to make sure that I have that I have time to do that, so we can get dinner on the table by seven. This is just a little image of what this all looks like now that. Okay, I'll be right there. Go, buddy. Of what it looks like. I know that this is a lot of grease, but remember this is like the 7327 um, blend of the ground beef, as well as. Two, on, two chopped onions and two chopped green peppers. I know that that's a lot of grease. That's why I said that I will definitely drain this extremely well and then work on the rest of it tomorrow because I want to make sure that it is drained completely fully before I add it into my vegetable beef soup or my shepherd's pie. Okay, so I wanted to show you how I'm prepping my chicken teriyaki for my slow cooker freezer meal. I'm going to just show you how to do one, but hopefully I'll be able to get um, at least two bags. I'm going to double the rest recipe to be able to get two bags. So again, I've got my Ziploc bag that's going to be going into the freezer on my stand. I have two and a half pounds of frozen chicken breasts because I'm going back in the freezer, so why, you know, why worry about it? The good thing about this is once it's cooked down, chicken breast shreds really well, so that's why I wanted to put that in. So to my two and a half pounds of chicken breast, so in being one of these, just one of these skin, boneless skinless chicken breasts, I'm going to add one cup of brown sugar. One tablespoon of ground ginger. One cup, eight ounces of soy sauce. Or if you're going gluten free, you know, change out everything you have to do. The brown monk fruit sugar as well, the brown monk fruit or the coconut amnios or what have you. Then I have chopped up one green bell pepper as well as one onion. I'm gonna throw that in there. And then there you go. So I'll get this all together label it get it ready for the freezer and then i will double this amount this will be good for one family meal when i want to use it i'll take it out the night before if i'm home i'll throw it in the slow cooker for high of four hours or low of eight hours and or if i'm in a rush and forget i'll throw it in my pressure cooker biggest thing is just to make sure that your chicken is well cooked soft so that it's able to shred well this will go great over brown rice or you know just use as a side with some veggies depending on how you're deciding to do your meal so here we go all done okay just showing you the completed vegetable and beef soup so i had three quarts of beef broth as well as i did um, use about two pounds of the meat that I had made 
and um, let let drain overnight as well as put in a bag of the frozen almost 40 ounces of the frozen vegetables and then let it all come together oh I'm sorry and two large cans of crushed tomatoes as well and then of course you add the seasonings as needed I let it come to um, let it come to a boil then had it simmer for about 30 minutes and now I'm waiting for it to completely cool down before I get it in the Ziploc bag And here I have what I'm calling a type of an assembly line from the rest of the meat that I made. Remember that was a total of seven pounds that I had ground up, put in a chopped bell pepper as well as the bell, um, chopped onions. And I'm making two shepherd's pie with the rest. So this is about three pounds went into the soup and about four pounds, so two pounds in each pan of the ground beef mixture. And then um, I had already started one. So just to show you, you layer, you layer everything like the shepherd's pie. Do the ground beef mixture first then I'm pouring in all the vegetables which is three cups on each side <clears throat> spreading that out all the way and of course everything's still frozen uh, the meat is definitely well cold you know uh, definitely well chilled because I had it in the fridge overnight so now I'm going to I went ahead and I had a five pound bag of Yukon cold potatoes that I went and I boiled them, mashed them up with some butter, some milk, and of course the seasonings of your choice. I'm going to put that on top, spread it between the two pans, and then I've got a mixture of the Colby and the Monterey Jack that I'm going to put on top of everything. Once it's completely cooled because the mashed potatoes are still a little warm, then I'll wrap it up, double wrap in foil, then wrap it in saran wrap and stick them into the freezer. So I've got half my mashed potato mixture, like I said. I'm just going to spread that on top. It's going to be a thick and hearty shepherd's pie. Or cottage pie because it's using ground beef and not your, not your lamb. So get this spread out. Cover with the cheese. You want to say something, sweet? Mm -hmm. Welcome to Mars! And also, do not think this is uh, annoying and disgusting because there's food on this. Also, parents, give good comments about this. Like, tell me if your kids do this at home. So, don't Can think you it's not nasty. eat my potato masher. Go put that up. <laughs> Okay, so this is the final day of my freezer cooking. I did spread it out over three days. There were a couple days that I just wasn't feeling good. So the last thing that I have done is I went ahead and made my meatloaf. It's just the rest of that um, 10 pound roll of the ground beef. I chopped up some mushrooms, some peppers, some onions, put a little bit of oats in there and some eggs to bind it. Of course with my um, you know, salt, pepper, oregano, parsley. I really had a chock full of veggies, another way to sneak those veggies in. And I uh, was able to make out of those three pounds, I made two. So I did about one and a half pounds of meat with all of those veggies and everything to make two meat loaves. And I put them in Ziploc bags and put them in the freezer. And then I had a 10 pound bag of chicken breast that I went ahead and I boiled so that I could, you know, or cook them down so that I could shred. And I used them to double chicken parmesan bakes that I have. So I I um, did it kind of like a lasagna layer. And um, so what I did was I did the layer of the, the layer of some chicken, then covered it with sauce and some mozzarella and then repeated those layers. And those pans can last two nights for my family. Because of course you eat this, once you throw it in the oven, 350, 375 for about an hour, really until it's all bubbly because everything is all cooked. You're waiting for it to get warmed all the way through for all of the cheese to melt, all the mozzarella to melt, 
and I also put a little bit of Parmesan on the very top. But that, when you pair it over some noodles or a side salad, one pan of that can really last your family for two, you know, two consecutive meals or whatever. So this is what the final result looks like, minus the wrapping and minus the little bit of Parmesan cheese on top. So throughout all of my cooking and everything that you saw, don't pay attention to that because I've got to clean all of this stuff up. But throughout all of my cooking, um, I ended up getting two bags of chicken teriyaki for a slow cooker meal. I got four bags of lemon garlic chicken. I have three, no, two and a half bags of the vegetable soup, like filled up Ziploc bags of the beef vegetable soup, two pans of the chicken and parmesan, one Ziploc slow cooker meal of the chicken and rosemary, um, you know, and it was just to dump everything in, freezer meal, the rosemary, the, you know, I did put in a few packs of butter with that because that'll all flow really well. I have done two shepherd's pies or cottage pies and um, I'm thinking that that's it I'm not exactly sure I also have some meat that is marinating for my dehydrator because I also like to make beef jerky and it was one of the kids requests so that was the end of my freezer meal cooking uh, and um, this will be a lot of meals for our family I like I try to get as much as I can in for those days when it seems a little crazy and maybe even times when as life happens I forget to take it out and take out a meal the night before and as soon as I get home I get it straight from frozen and I just add more time when I'm baking you know when I'm throwing it into the oven I also have a pressure cooker so I can do that as well with the, with the slow cooker meals if need be luckily I kind of try to set reminders as I'm shutting down for the night if I need to pull something out for the next day I do that but there have been times where I'm just you know I get home and it's four o'clock and I'm staring at a block of chicken thighs because they're frozen so that's life that's real life that's what happens but especially with school starting next week I really wanted to get a lot of these out of the way because you know as any parent knows with the, when the new school year starts and getting back into those routines and those schedules it can sometimes be a little a little bit difficult especially since we have um, you know the girls say and said are going to fifth grade and third grade respectively but my little boo my baby my, my boy my first boy is going to kindergarten so I am going to be all right I am not going to make one of those videos crying as I dropped him off. He is ecstatic about going to kindergarten and has actually been talking about riding the bus for the better part of this year. So I think it's going to be a good ride, but I know that it will also just help that I have, you know, I don't have to worry about meals, just fixing the sides and I mean, you know, a side salad, throwing some noodles together, some rice to go with, with any of these, any of these meals should, you know, just, it'll just really help out so I hope you enjoy this very long video I hope it was able to inspire you to prepare for your family and um, yep that's it so just welcome to Mars and you guys have a wonderful night be kind to yourself love one another and you never know who your smile can touch